Hello, and welcome to the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. Each episode, we talk about a particular topic in the life of a professor. We are tenure-track faculty members in the sciences, working at a primarily undergraduate university in California. The purpose of our podcast is reflection, so we bring something we think is working and something we're working on to discuss. Welcome to the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. Hi, I'm Ruth. And I'm Claire. And today we're talking about getting tenure, part three. But first, Ruth, how was your week? It was okay. When you said that, I was about to say, oh, and hopefully the final part, but then I gave myself a lot of anxiety about whether it would be so. <laughs> yeah. Um, my week was weird because this is the week we actually submitted our tenure files. And so, yes. Yeah. And it was, as everything that's ever happened in my life, it's a weird feeling the next day where you kind of feel a little flat and strange. Mm-hmm. And so... I was definitely feeling a little weird last week and I read a book that was so funny. My stomach muscles are actually sore today really? and I like That's menaced great. Eric by following him around the house and reading excerpts <laughs> from the book but not being able to get through the excerpts because I was laughing so much which is the most annoying thing to have happen to you. So That's funny. that was basically um yes my week. So it it definitely was flat and strange and then with a definite uptick at the end when I basically i read the book within like it was like 20 hours of me starting it and basically just harassing eric about it what was the book oh yeah so it's called more than a woman by catlin morin okay and it's um it's just so funny and so true and i read (laughs) she wrote an earlier book called how to be a woman which was about kind of being in your early 30s okay and then this is now about going it like being in your 40s and i'm like is she going to bring me through my whole life, basically? That would be nice. Like, I, know, so yeah. <laughs> I did not know how much I needed to read that book. But tell me, how was your week? My week was good. I um, I had this funny moment where it was the weekend and I said, okay, I'm going to check my email and there's going to be a whole pile of student emails, but I'm just going to respond to them all. And there weren't any. What? And then I realized that you get fewer emails from students when there's fewer assignments due, <laughs> which of course makes sense. Um, can we and- can we construct our like syllabus based <laughs> on that fact? Like, can we be like, I don't want to do any emails because I did my tech Sabbath and turned the computer back on. And there uh-huh. was nine, 19 emails from students. And, uh-huh. um, I know because it's interesting because I'm not uh, obviously I want the emails from students. I want to have the back and forths. I want them to be working on assignments and them working on assignments is you know, if they send me emails, that's an indication they're working on the assignment. So I True. totally want to do that. But that's not to say it wasn't a relief to see there weren't any emails. Um, well, it so, also means everything is ticking along nicely. That's true. So that's, that's true. Yeah. yeah. So um, so I guess it was a reminder to me that um, emails mean they're working on things and that's good. But um, so also when I assign assignments, be aware that that comes with emails and be mentally prepared for all the emails that come with assignments. That, but this that weekend is... I had no emails, so yeah. Wonderful. I'm hoping for such a weekend. Well, I, it made me because I was at first like, oh, this is why I shouldn't do the tech Sabbath, but it's why I should, right? Because I would have yes. been answering those 19 emails in dribs and drabs throughout yeah. my entire Saturday, and so that would not be a good thing. Right. Right. Yeah. Totally. So, um, so are you okay if I do my quote? Yes. What is your quote? So I'm going to quote um Caitlin Morin okay. because. She's my professor of life, basically, at this point. So um, I'm going to go with that. And I feel like it's a little relevant to the getting tenure part three. Awesome. And so it's basically, if you're not a confident person, pretend to be one. Ooh. And I'm like, yes, yes, yes. That would I be, like it. Yeah. Because it's amazing reading. Other people are super generous with sharing their files. And it's amazing realizing how, even in something like the tenure file, which is so structured, how you can really come across as self-deprecating or you know what I mean it's just it's interesting to see that that's cool I like that you know what it reminds me of is this thought process that I I haven't done as much lately but definitely my first couple semesters I found really helpful which is a student comes up and they ask you some question like can I hand in this assignment later whatever it might be and I would be like gosh I don't know the answer but what would a professor who really has everything together say in this case and that would help me figure out what to say and um, so anyway, I, I like I that. I love that because I think I've talked about my most favorite book, like which is Circle of Friends by Maeve. Oh, yes. But uh-huh. they do a lot of like, what would the wise woman do? So I'm uh-huh. going to call that what would the wise professor do? Totally. Go with yeah. You. And then just yeah. say that and then it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. And okay, perfect. So working well, what has been working well for you with this final intense stage of the final intense stage? Process? Yeah. So we're at the point we both just submitted our files. There's like a week grace period where everyone else gets to finish submitting letters and then the files officially submitted. Um, so that's where we're at right now. Yeah. So one of the things that I actually did right at the end of finishing my file that was really helpful was writing out all the requirements. So our department has very specific requirements for what mm. you need to do to meet to you know meet the criteria. Um, and I know that's not the case for everybody. But what I did was I wrote out the requirements for each section, you know, teaching, research, and service, wrote out the requirements and how I felt like I met them. And it was hugely helpful confidence-wise, because after I did that, I was like, look, these are the requirements, and I did meet them. So, great. Um, and, of course, it, the reason I was doing it was to be helpful for the committee reading it so that it was really obvious for them that I had met the criteria. Um, and it was one of the last things I did, but it was really so comforting. And so I recommend it being one of the first things people do. Um and, in, you know, in future review cycles, I plan to do that. First thing, how did I meet the requirements? Okay, boom. I love that. And I think, you know, I think I would even go a step further because we have really vague requirements. Uh -huh. And we're moving now to getting specific ones. And a lot of them were copied from yours in chemistry. Great. So, um, but I would say, you know, at first I thought having vague requirements was good you know, because it's like, well, anyone can interpret it this way. And if they, you know, want you to be here, they can interpret successful at scholarship as being whatever they want it to be. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think that was the general, like it was supposed to be a kindness. And I think it's the reverse is true. I think having things really specific and knowing from the beginning, this is what I need to do to keep on top of things. Totally. Is so beneficial. And then having that process. So definitely I would totally, and I'm going to do for the next review cycle, what you said, which is do that in the beginning. But I think if you're in any position to influence what your tenure requirements are, oh, I would yeah. absolutely lean towards spec specificity. That's, that's specificity. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so yeah, that that's definitely true. But yeah, good. I like it. Yeah. So what about you? What What's working for you right now? What's working for me is, um, I'm glad it's over. Nice. I me think too. <laughs> Well, yeah, one thing I think that really worked well for me this time was like, I think as I'm getting older, I really know myself. Okay. And I know enough about myself to know the closer I get to the deadline, the more and more my brain function is not working. Mm. So I have to do things well in advance, mm -hmm. you know, so I definitely like I've been uploading stuff all summer into Interfolio to get like all the student evals up there and stuff and just knowing that about myself because I can see other people who could start it like start the, the big document that we have to write later and they can just power it out and I look mm -hmm. at them and salute them and know enough about myself to know that that is not how I can operate totally, so totally. I think I did a good job of sort of knowing that about myself and that's being, great like, the last thing I should be doing on the day that it's due is just like reorganizing things not uh -huh. huge things because I just yeah yeah that's great and I, cause I'm always that student who like when a professor would give us an extension I'd be like I, it's no use to me because I'm like I've gone into shutdown mode like I uh -huh. just can't do stuff the night before or whatever yeah yeah so yeah so yeah. knowing I think knowing I am definitely the person who cannot do all-nighters mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. a good a good piece of information Another thing about that, so I love the doing it the way that works for you. Also, so I was uploading all my stuff the last day. I, I did all the work on the documents in advance mm. and then just uploaded everything on the last day. And I was uploading it early in the morning at first and it was working great. And then as it got later in the morning, yeah, it started slowing like, down because mm -hmm, I, I think that. everyone else was uploading. Yeah. So um, totally good idea yeah. to do that in advance. And then I just need to like one thing that's not working well but might work well in the future is okay. to just calm down about the letters because yes. I know I've written letters for people and I hand them in in the very last minute uh -huh. and so I just didn't believe that was going to be true for me and I was like there's no letters and nobody's going to and of course they're going to hand it in on the day when it's due right but I did not like 
really in my heart of hearts believe that so you weren't have... confident that they were coming in but they did come in is that is right that... and like so next time hopefully i will know okay they're coming you just yeah. need to wait yeah and not freak out about it i think i was doing some terrible extrapolation of like well if i've gotten this amount of letters over a period of three months that means <laughs> like at this rate i will only get you know so whatever right it was but not really helpful. it's exponential to the deadline i'm sure yes <laughs> exactly exactly so yeah that was a thing that's funny so what about you um what is something you're working on something? well it's not worrying as much about mm -hmm. the file um because, yeah, I built it up into this huge thing. You know, I put the calendar event on six months ago and was like, oh, my gosh, submit my tenure files on the calendar. And um, and I think that's, you know, to some extent, that's good, of course. And I want to make it the best file I can make it. And I want it to be all organized. And I want to argue everything well. And I'm not saying anything about that. I'm just saying my own feelings and not worrying about it. Because for the first couple of weeks of school, I was thinking you know, I kind of put the tenure file on the back burner because we were doing classes. And then I was thinking, gosh, it's been on the back burner for a long time. But once I pulled it off the back burner, it was fine. It was close. I finished it. I submitted it. I feel good about it. And actually, when I submitted it, it kind of felt anticlimactic because I built it up time. into such a big level of significance. Um, so yeah, next round of promotion files, I want to give it less power and just focus on completing the documents, doing them well, but not build it up into this giant, like, impossible thing. That's the thing, right? Because it's it's a series of tasks, right? Yeah. Like, it's not actually, you know, like, the work you did is huge, but, like, listing them, it's kind of tedious. Mm -hmm. But it's not, but it feels like there's some loadedness about this, like, tenure file that, like, yes, it strikes terror into your heart and makes mm -hmm. it feel like this monumental thing. right. Right. And as I was doing it, I mean, I, I still advocate strongly for the the put all the evidence that you get of all the things you mm -hmm. do into one spot. So it's all there. And then it's easy to pull out. And so, um, yeah, so once once I had all the evidence, because I already had all the evidence in one email folder, and I just needed to pull it out and like write a little bit about each one of it. The dates were already there because they were corresponded with the email. Yeah. So at that point, it really wasn't that hard to write little bits about each one of them. Um, I think it would have been a much bigger deal if I had to remember all the things and then track down the evidence. That would have been a bigger job, of course. But yeah. It's funny. It sort of reminds me, I don't know why, but of like getting married, where like when <laughs> we were getting married, it was like I was so stressed. And then at some point you're like, wait, all of these people like us and want to be here. Like, this is not a hostile crowd. You know like what I mean? Like planning the wedding, that kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, like planning uh -huh. the wedding, I was just like, ah. And we didn't have a particularly big wedding or anything, but I was, you know, just stressing out about it. But then just remembering that all of these people are on your team mm -hmm. and actually want this to happen. And so I think I kind of had a slight, I mean, I hope it's true, but in general people are not just trying to take you down in mm -hmm. the tenure process. Sure. Like it's not just people seeking out ways to like annihilate your file and you suddenly can't, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. yeah. And the file's a big task, but we've done bigger tasks. It's not right. a gigantic monumental task. It's just a big task and you just do it and then you've done it. I'm feeling this big call to like somehow like normalize this process more and make it more like not this like there's like this exam fear or something that goes with it that like yeah. just seems terrifying but so yeah and it's funny because you do talk to people who've gone through it and they're like you're fine this is not as big a deal as you think it you know but you're <laughs> like, it is a big deal it's the biggest deal it's the worst deal but then maybe we'll be transformed on the other side and be like yeah it's fine it's not a big deal uh-huh so, yeah. yeah probably so what are you what are you working on i think genuinely um i think i really did feel dreadful after i handed it in and mm. it's always this thing right like the only time i didn't have this huge flatness after a big project was my PhD and it's because I was super pregnant so I was distracted by mm. like, being about to give birth so that was the only time that didn't happen but anytime I've had a huge project or a huge a big exam or anything I always feel a little weird afterwards and so mm -hmm. I think I'm such a misery bag like Eric <laughs> said to me he's like oh that's great you know it's in and I was like yeah 
And then I'll have to do the whole thing again for the <laughs> professor file. And he was just like, oh, okay, <laughs> like, I don't know how to talk you out of this because that's quite a ways away. So I think um, I've come back to kind of equilibrated thanks to that hilarious book. So I feel like I'm back to not total misery. That's good. Yeah. And then, and then I guess a more negative thing would be like, maybe I'll actually be resubmitting it in a year. So it'll be fine. But, um, I think confidence is a big thing that I'm working on and maybe like being a little self-deprecating in things and feeling really uncomfortable with blowing my own trumpet. Okay. You know, I think that that is a big struggle to kind of even with things like hours estimations for service Mm -hmm. I think I probably underestimated things because I feel like someone's going to spring out and be like oh really like did it really take you an hour to get ready for that thing and you know so I kind (laughs) of think I was being a bit too Mm -hmm. maybe a little um conservative with some of those estimates and but it's just it's so scary to like blast out there like of course I'm awesome and I totally deserve this and so Uh it's a little it's tricky and I could see how reading them like if somebody is taking that stance you're probably nodding along with them and being like yeah you do deserve it good for you I'm glad you see that Uh and uh but then it's just the fear that like someone will be like oh look who's full of themselves and thinks they deserve Uh tenure or whatever so Uh I think that's definitely a struggle I think that's just a practice thing, too. Like, surely yeah. we just get better at that with time. Because, like, you read my file and you were like, Claire, you need to take out some of these, like, minimizing words that you're using. Well, and I and said, oh, okay. It's actually kind of powerful to read that because it's so clear to me. You're like a mega superstar. <laughs> you know what <laughs> well, I mean? And you. if you're doing it, it's like, oh, hang yeah, on, maybe. Yeah, totally. It's just a thing. Because normally you don't just... T- brag about things and but in this case we're not bragging we're just giving the information to the committee so that they can decide um and that's another thing i i guess i recommend is if if any listeners universities have events where you can go and hear more about the tenure process we had one where some of the people who are on the uh, university committee were there and tenure candidates could go and just ask questions like how many letters do you need or whatever Mm. the questions were and, um, yeah, and a lot of the things they were saying was, you know, the committee decides whether you've met the criteria, and they should do that no matter how well you lay it out. But it can't hurt to lay it out well. It's a benefit to lay it out well. And they may Are disagree you... with you. They may say, oh, I don't think that meets that requirement. But that's okay. You've still made it easier for them to say, look, this is how I think I meet that. And if they disagree, then they'll look for some other way and see whether... You need it that well, other dude, way. It's like boxing your answers, right? When you're grading things. <laughs> yes. And like, I remember a student being like, but why, why should I make it neat? And, uh-huh. spe- and you're like, well, like, you know, and obviously, yes, I am trying to be extremely non-biased when I'm grading things, but I'm not a robot. And if right. something is laid out nicely, it's so much easier for me to find ways to give you points. And, <laughs> One of my students yeah. uploaded something and it came up sideways and then he left a comment and he said, I tried uploading it again. I think the second one is, you know, not sideways. I assume you grade more harshly if you have to crane your neck to the side while you're grading. <laughs> you're like, no, like, but actually maybe a little. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah, the whole process was, um, it's, a, it's, it's intense. It feels intense. It does and feel I intense. I would like, I would like to do some things definitely differently. Like I found myself writing emails to people asking for letters and I was like irritating myself even rereading them do you know oh, what I really mean? like you phrased was... it in a way you didn't want to. well it was just so like I'm sure you can't but if you could I'd be so and it's like oh my god Ruth just get over yourself and just are you gonna write me a letter great thanks I would love one lovely uh-huh. and move yeah. on not yeah. like yeah yeah well We'll do it better next time. But the point is, next time being when we're promoted to full professor, yes, I yes, mean. Yes, of course. Um, but yes, we, we did it the first time. And we don't need to do it perfectly. We just need to do it up to the bar that we get tenure and promotion. Dude, that's a thing though, right? Um, I'm kind of segueing into a little bit of something else. But just thinking about like how conversations I'm having with a lot of people about virtual teaching Mm -hmm. and how a lot of people are incredibly stressed about it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because 
maybe a lot of the people who find themselves in our job and our role, like we're kind of uptight about getting things exactly right or like, sure. you know, so it is, it's, you're so right. Like you don't have to. So someone told me a story once that she took physics at a time when she was taking it in a class with someone else and they were like working in groups and doing stuff. And this person was always like C for chiropractor. Like he was, had no interest in getting any grade above a C because mm-hmm. that's what he needed mm-hmm. to get into the program. Yeah. And she just couldn't cope with this person. Like it was uh-huh. just like, Oh my God, like, what are you talking about? How can you risk it? Like it was just right. cause he was like, no, nah, I'm not going to do that last question. Cause I just want to get a C. And it was unfathomable to her that that could be actually happening. And I feel like, for all of us, we're all a bit like that, mm-hmm, you know, and yeah, so it's the same thing with the tenure file, because you're right, you don't have to blow it out of the water and have it be right. absolute perfection. It just has to be all right and not egregiously right. terrible. Yeah, like yeah. earlier today, it suddenly occurred to me, oh, I should have put a quote from this one letter in this one spot in my file, and I didn't do that. And then I was like, well, okay, <laughs> but, you know, it would have been better. Uh, sure, would have been better, but I don't think that's going to make or break the file so no oh well yeah 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 i think what's going to be super interesting is i haven't ever been on any of those kind of committees i can't wait to be on a committee i like, wonder because a lot of people who i've been fretting at have been like oh i'm on the committees you're fine uh-huh. you're like, but really i don't think and they're like trust me you're <laughs> and you're like i don't know but like i guess maybe once you see behind the curtain you're right. like oh actually this isn't what i thought it was right i'm sure that's true i'm sure that's yeah. true yeah, I think part of it, too, though, is you'd get these horror stories, right, of people. But it's like everything, like you remember those terrible stories and not right. a lot of people are coming to tell you about their completely normal tenure process. I submitted my wasn't. file, normal things happened, I got tenure. Yeah, nobody tells that story. No, but everyone wants to tell the story about, did you hear about the time with the comma and then you didn't get it? And like, <laughs> you're like, oh, wow. So it's like, yeah. And then you have to go through your whole file for commas. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. Or oh, you don't, man. and you just fret about it like me and not do it. But oh, anyway, man. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. Cool. Well, here we are on the other side. On the other side. Yes. Where we hoped we'd be. Yeah. So if any listeners are working on their tenure files, we'd love to hear from you. And, oh, uh, yeah, totally. Yeah. We'd love to and hear we can be what's the going saying, well. Don't worry. It's yeah. fine. And yeah. Would, yeah. That would be good. Totally. Yeah. And it's funny, too, because I have people who are not, who, like, I've been t- talking to them about it, but they're not in this kind of process. And they're like, great, so, like, will you hear in a week? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh no, this this goes on for, like, because I guess, when do you hear? Like, next June. May or something? Yeah, so it's, we'll, we'll probably revisit some of the fretting again. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, listeners, it's not the last Don't time. Don't worry, there will be us. a getting tenure part four. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we should do it. But thank you. And thank you so much for all of your help. Oh, well, you're Claire welcome. has been on thank full emergency well. services tech support. <laughs> so, yeah. We've had a lot of texts back and forth through this process. We have. So get a tenure buddy if you don't have one. Oh, yeah. yeah, the information flow was generally one way, but I still I, <laughs> I I, I'm glad I was true. in it. Yeah. Well, thanks a okay. lot, Ruth. Thanks, Claire. Thanks, Ralph. Thanks so much for joining us on the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. We're delighted to have you as a listener and we would love to hear from you. And if you want to email us, our address is contactprofessorpodcast at gmail.com. We'd love to hear any of your suggestions for future shows or professor quotes that you might want to share with us, or even just things that have come up for you when you were listening to previous episodes. And if you've been enjoying the podcast, we would love if you would spread the word. So the best way to spread word is by telling people you know if you think they should listen to it or you can leave us a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.